and we are live, I think, on YouTube. Yes, we are now streaming on YouTube. Good evening and welcome everyone. Welcome to the Inner Standing Spirituality Show. I'm your host, Aloise Surfleet Middleton. And as ever, I have with me my two fashionably late guests. They are <laughs> I'd love to have gone to parties with you two when we were like when we were in our youth. <laughs> it would have been great fun. <laughs> we wouldn't have got there. You'd have never got there. <laughs> Josh X, how are you? All the way from sunny Portugal. I am extremely well, thank you very much. And I'm very much looking forward to the fast beginning tomorrow. Ah, oh, is it so tomorrow? It is beginning tomorrow. If anybody is not uh, joined us yet then you still have a chance and we do have a 200 strong telegram group and everybody on there is absolutely wonderful and wow. we are encouraging this beautiful time that we're going through right now to be able to take in the energies that we should be receptive to amazing yes absolutely guys if you are watching this and you still want to join then obviously jump into the telegram group um and charlie how are you this evening Great. Um, uh, Colleen and I are going to be doing the, the juice fast followed up by the water fast as well. So we will be right well prepared for December 21st, uh, which is the fall of man, which is totally okay because it's supposed to happen. And then the miracle occurs. And that's what this show is all about. The miracle occurring. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and everyone out there listening, Thank you so much for joining us. I would really appreciate your help and support. Apologies for being fashionably late, but now you're finding us. I can see you all jumping on. Hello, hello, hello. I would love it, love it, love it if you would be so kind as to share this video in some groups, in some high vibrational Facebook groups or wherever you feel called so we can get the number of people up watching this and listening to this. And if you would be so kind as to tag this video on any on my thread or my Facebook group, any of the Dharma Life Academy people, that would be amazing. So tonight we have got another incredible show in store. This is our sixth show, which I can't quite believe it. It's, you know, it's gone really, really quickly. Um, <clears throat> and tonight we are talking about distillation. We're going to have to explain that one, Charlie. <laughs> or, <laughs> I think that's autumn. <laughs> <laughs> but tonight we are talking about distillation. This is the sixth step within inner alchemy. And obviously we've mentioned this before, but really important for you guys to understand that obviously this process is not linear. You know, this stuff can happen whenever and whenever it wants to really. And so tonight we're going to be talking about purifying the spirit, freeing ourselves from the ego, you know, it includes freeing ourselves from the attachments that we've got through food, through alcohol, through sugar, through coffee, um, you name it. And it also involves getting into more of a spiritual routine and spiritual ritual. And we're going to have three guests joining us later, which is very exciting, hey. which is really, really good. Um, and before, actually, we've got ex exciting news. Maybe we should talk about the 21st as well and just tell people about that. Mm. And we can... Yeah. Okay. You want to um, take it? Josh, do you want to share the big news? Well, we all can share this. We are doing a wonderful show between us three, and we have some absolutely amazing guests. We're starting at 6 p.m. UK time, and we'll be finishing at 6 a.m. UK time. 7, so 7 p.m. UK. 7 p.m. UK. <laughs> 7 7 okay. UK, and then 7 a.m. Yeah. There we go. And we have uh, an array of wonderful things going on for everybody to be able to be introduced to this higher frequency. Um, we're going to have guided meditations. We're going to have wonderful uh, ancient gong music. Mobius Loop are going to be there. We've got some amazing, amazing musicians and just, it's going to be a wonderful night full of great gnosis. And we are, do we have Mark Devlin coming on? Yeah, Mark Devlin. And we've got uh, astrologers coming on show who are going to be essentially demystifying exactly what is happen, happening at this really historical conjunction um, and Charlie will be there, Colleen will be there, Josh will be there, I'll be there, Mark Devlin will be there, lots of other guests 
So it's just, it's already shaping up to be an incredible evening. And we're going to be, uh, as Josh said, we're going to be starting 7 p.m. UK time, but then we're going to be obviously hurrying on for literally 12 hours. So every time zone will get the benefit of this show. We're going to be starting in the UK, European side, and then we're going to be going over to the Mexican, Canadian and US, and then obviously Australia as well. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's cool how we pick up Australia, New Zealand, um, and largely South Africa uh, as well uh, around that same time. So it's going to be great. Alois will will host for I think about the first three hours. Uh, then um, Josh uh, will will be taking over for for much of that time. We'll also have a, a couple of pre-recorded. Uh, incredible um, noses uh, to share as well. And then uh, once I feed all the animals, <laughs> once I feed all the animals and I'm free, all of my watering and scooping and, and hammering and stuff, then then I'll take over. And then I'll be a good drill. <laughs> and all over the rest of the way, all along. It's going to be a lot of fun. So it's going to be an amazing show. And from our end, Amanda, uh, Amanda McLeod, which is going to be great. We should have Santos uh, Bonacci uh, with us as well. And the amazing Siobhan O'Brien uh, from Ireland, an incredible singer. Uh, so we, like Josh said, we just have so many incredible guests. It's going to be a magical evening because it is a magical evening. And it, it's the most important point in, in, in our history, mankind's history, to this point. So it, it is a very, very magical moment. Josh, Josh has got the pen out. <laughs> uh, I was doing a, a, a U shape. We are at the bottom about to rise up from the, from the U. So um, yeah, we can start with now with distillation, if you like, and I can bring the word distillation in to explain what distillation is. Can everyone see that? Can I, can I just get Charlie to do a quick update and then I will hold that thought. That would be amazing. Um, Please do. Everybody loves your updates, Charlie. So uh, obviously a lot of info, a lot of uh, this, you know, everything's rolling. Um, yep, you of can't, yeah, you can't stop what's coming. So the fact of the matter is once they announced the Kraken, um, and that's even before General Flynn was fully exonerated, and he is part of this three prong process to the Kraken. And Josh is gonna love this. Um, and remember folks, you know, think about what a Kraken represents. Think who, what, what we've taught you, who the cabal truly are, right? So these are the, the Phoenicians. So these are the original pirates of the high seas. These are the ones that created maritime admiralty law. Now, where does the Kraken live? What, how many tentacles does, does our Kraken have 13 and what is our Kraken going to do it is going to destroy maritime admiralty law and you will go from a dead man walking from a zombie to a natural man and that's that's what Josh is Josh is is one of the most perfect forms of a living breathing natural man and it's what we're all supposed to be Alois a perfect example of living breathing uh, womb man. We're all men, womb men and men, and uh, we're meant to be free, not zombies, not dead men walking. And the Kraken is going to destroy the last vestiges of a system. And when all of this comes out, what, what will strike you more than anything else is how everything has been a lie, therefore an illusion. So I cannot stress this to you enough. When people around you fall and they literally will, literally will fall to the ground um, when, when they hear this, you have been living a complete falsehood. So the, as Josh teaches, there's a world and there's the earth. The earth has always been there and it's been perfect this entire time. And then hiding that through the mainstream media has been the lie and none of it has been true none of it none of it wars assassinations none of it they have lied to us about everything and so what you're going to realize is that the entire time there was mother earth 
just waiting for us. And then she shows us the way. She teaches us the way. And then when she has uh, completed her education of us, then the Father comes and we connect to the Father. And then we have the Holy Trinity, Father, Mother, Child. So um, what has started cannot be stopped. Not even, not even the President Trump or the, or the Q team can stop it now. So everything when, is, is going to be unveiled. When do they, um, I know the court case is obviously happening at the Supreme Court at the moment with regards to the election. Do you know the rough time frame on that, Charlie? Well, we have, we have all different swing states and um, they're all gonna play out a little differently, but the court dates have been set. There already was the court date in Pennsylvania and, um, and the, um, the, the remnants of the cabal attempted to, to block it. And, um, and then the court ruled that, that they couldn't and that everything that the um, Trump team had uh, was admissible as evidence. So that's going to proceed. George is going to proceed. Um, uh, Arizona is ready to proceed. Nevada is ready to proceed. California is, is just about ready to proceed. And then it just, it just get, they did it a little differently everywhere. And as all of this comes out, you're gonna get the whole picture of, of all of this um, subterfuge and trickery that, that they were doing. And it will just blow you away. Um, just the, the bottom line is that they're massive liars. They lie about everything. So um, yeah, you can't stop it. And, um, you know, and like I said, at the end of the day, if they wanted to go back through every state, I'll bet you anything Trump won every single state. And, but that's not what this is about. This is just about moving forward as quickly as we can, um, to start healing corruption. and helping. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're coming to the fall of man, as Josh said, and the distillation show today is so perfect because, because President Trump is well aware of this. He knows that we have to give some hope now because it, without hope falling into this lowest point of our physiology, which is the winter solstice, it, it could be very deep and very dark for some, for some folks. So we need some, some real successes and we need some real um, uh, releases and some, um, some gifts uh, of just giving back to you. It's yours anyways, um, but it'll give people a lot of hope. And this is the Christmas cheer, the Yuletide um, uh, feeling that needs to be rising up within all of us. So again, relax. There's a plan uh, for, for every nation. Some of you have heard about the 17 nations. Yeah. Now, every nation, every nation, they're not going to go to Australia and then avoid uh, New Zealand or avoid South Africa. This is every nation on earth. All the governments are going to be taken down, replaced with temporary governments until elections um, uh, can be held. And uh, the full rollout of the Nasara principles, which again, is just godliness, is just taking away which is illegal and just giving you back what is naturally provided to you by God. There's no big, there's no big deal to any of this. Most of, most of what Nasara is, is getting rid of all of the fakery under the maritime admiralty law system and the Kraken, the Kraken is taking care of that and it's gonna destroy all of that stuff for good. So great, great days coming, great stuff coming. Uh, and and it, it's, it's all, it's all, underway nothing can stop it every day there'll be more and more revealed well so. we had some more peaceful protests here in london um at the weekend and they look like they're getting bigger and bigger every single event um and so you know humanity is rising you can really see it like and i just love you know i'm seeing in my community my friends and family you know people are really questioning and um you know kind of uh starting to step into their power um, which is just so wonderful to watch. You know, people are, are really starting. You know, whereas we've been so conditioned to just accept authority, you're now I'm seeing the flip where people are really starting to question and actually stand up for their rights and really start to step into their sovereignty, which is incredible. So exciting times on the planet. And as you said, perfect time for distillation. So Josh, <laughs> back to you and the blackboard. So can you, is there an actual, because obviously I always think of distillation as like purifying, um, yeah. purifying the spirit per se. Yeah. 
So this is exactly, I, I've only got a piece of paper and I hope you can see if I hold it still. Are you able to see the words? De, stay, de, de, uh, de, de, so, die, I'm, die. yeah, it's basically die, which is a state of pure balance. This D, which is form, I, which is consciousness. So this is form and consciousness merged together. But if you're looking at it from a um, material world aspect, if you look into the word itself, it is basically a point where a positive and a negative charged particle become so close that they discharge plasma. Now, this is the state that our bodies can go into. Um, plasma being P, which is light, L as the mother. And this is how we'll find this charge by unifying ourselves with the mother. But to distill at ion, distill at ion is the die sine wave or the physical consciousness with these double L's. Now these double L's are representations of this torus field. You have the AL and the EL, okay? In language, you have the AL and the EL, red shift and the blue shift at ions. So distillation itself within the word is telling you that you need to balance your sine wave in your physical body with consciousness to become the double L or the Bible at your ions, which is your charge, your field. And then as you said, pure, mm. if you look at the word pure, you'll see is P, which is light, and your or you are ether. And then you can look at the light, you rightfully establish or the light you full magnetic with the ether so to be pure again is to be the light from the ether field and this is what you need this is the, the full reciprocation of man this is changing the energetic system that we have inside our physiology and how we do it is pure alchemy this is the distillation process this is removing anything that we have just remaining on a positive charge and being in perfect balance with our system and being in perfect balance allows the reciprocation of our energy and to activate light as such, which is plasma, which is the creative force of this existence. So purifying literally the body per se, as well as the mind. I think the whole purification fact would be, if you think of the mind and the body uh, that we have, uh, separate from the spirit, it's about purifying the mind and body to be able to be in balance with this spirit and in doing so when the mind and body are in harmony this creates light and this is how you can find your true energy source has been waiting and laying dormant from the left brain egoic system of material but if you look at the word full itself what charlie said earlier you'll see f represents six which is carbon but this means matter if you listen to the photon, it's P and H, and we say P is light. So an H represents eight, which is a vibration or this hyperboloid. Then F is a material light, and PH, which both sound f -f -f -f, phonetics and matter, and mm -hmm. all. So matter, all matter had the full. All of matter, so the, the fallen man is the man who's in the material or the matter sense, because mm -hmm. everything is illusion. Truly, as finest source, we, we have projected this from self, from thought, um, but the highest thought, which is source. So to be fallen from that energetic field of instant manifestation is to be fallen from the tree and this is the matter we live in so yeah i won't get too deep into it because it can take a long time to express and explain what these letters and words mean but but are you essentially like, saying it's in like as in fall as in autumn as well yes but again the true definition of the word fall is that we're all in matter so the word has one true meaning and the meaning is expressed itself through the word and the word fall is literally that we have, and if you look at the word fallen, it would be F, all, mm -hmm. E, which is ether, and N. So matter, all matter has ended ether, which is a non-connection to the divinity. And this is why we need to go from A to E, which is truly A to Z. 
which is the longitudinal and latitudinal waves of creation to create a fully reciprocating magnetic body. So what does that actually look like? Like for somebody listening, right, they're thinking, okay, so this distillation, pro- this process, like, you know, people are probably going through this at the moment. What is it that they need to look for to know that the kind of this is the stage that potentially they're at? Perception is key. Perception, as soon as you have a, a, a conscious, um, let's say, awareness, and you can see the illusion of the world. This is kind of stage one in your progressive nature, which means you have a higher vibration and you're no longer fooled by this, by the senses as such. But this true distillation process that we would go through would only be able to be observable or, or felt by somebody that's taken the necessary steps to get there. If you were to sit back and you could imagine the matrix screen where the green astral light is just pouring down and you start to see characters, this is the true sense of when one is distilled. You will see that everything is just a flow of energy and a flow of consciousness. And there are physical aspects, but each physical carries an auric field or, or, or a charge within itself. And rather than the physical aspects, you see energy. Now, this is how you can truly envision life in its purest format is by understanding energy and this moves thought away and in doing so you feel and these are all new senses so it's a it's more of an expressive life through feeling rather than thought and then you are completely one with this source um so without getting too long and, and winded into it um to be able to see through this, this the, the eyes of the distilled is to be merged with astral light in your perception. You will only find this by taking the necessary steps. So how you would find it would be first initially recognize the world for its falsities, work on your body by living by the virtues, separate the mind by understanding the voices and the thoughts of demons and jinns and accumulation of ideas that we've basically picked up by the identity who we are. And then we need to utilize the climate system. Now, climate change is as above, so below, as within, so without. Mm -hmm. And our industrial commercial world represents through the lies, through the media. But the climate is in our system and this eight represents the fields or the geometry that lies within our true system. And there's different stages and different levels of vibration that we can step to once our perception and the action has been taken because action is our karma. And once we can action the gnosis that we've acquired and the resonances within us, we then become one and merge and progress. Again, the word progress, pro is four and G, which is the seven, which is the S even, the even sine wave. And then you have RE, which is the rightfully established, the double S's. These double S's are the two sine waves, the Bible. It's all about Taurus. It's all about the magnetism. So uh, how does the higher self and and integrating the higher self come into that? How would the higher self come into this? You perceive and observe as the observer there's no more thought, there's no more judgment, and everything that you have is coming from a pure state. And there's only one thing, and that is the pure state. This is P, the light of your ether. So to be with the etherical field, to be in a non-judgment state, is to be holistically whole again, and your experience in life for your own center void, which is just complete awareness. You are awareness. You are the creative force. And um, there is nothing other than to be a to them to be able, nothing more wonderful than to be able to see through the true eyes without distortion. So to be distilled is to remove all the distortion. And as awareness, there is nothing else. You are the observer that cannot be observed. So to see life for what it is, with non-judgment and it full awareness. The- because everywhere man looks until they have found this space, they constantly judge ideas that they've picked up, labeling and such. And these are all attachments. But to be able to be in that single moment is to be able to be like a child of just observing life with the full capabilities that you have. But seeing through the God aspect, this divine nature that we have within us, you know, divine has the die word, which is consciousness and matter merged and the vine that carries it all through the system. 
there's quite a hard thing to be able to share perception mm. but one must walk it and know that it's truly divine and as you progress there's constant progression that it never stops perception just keeps your limitations down your capabilities have been capped and it's really entirely up to you to be able to take yourself to the next level the word level itself is two L's either side and then Eve in the middle and then you would basically to become level you, these two L's is the red shift and the blue shift the AL and the EL and they must be even and that's how we become level by balancing out our thoughts our mind our physical with the etherical and, to being uh, in harmony in all areas. It is. It, it really the only the only way we can stay in this space is if we constantly challenge the thought and we constantly aware of what's going on and we constantly don't give in to the voices. Once you beat the voices, they let go and they leave you, and then the ego that's been trying to dominate you through the through the mind will will eventually have have ego death, and then it will serve you. So everything that comes through your entity is from pure source, is pure wisdom and it's knowingness. There's nothing that our pure awareness doesn't know. So once we can become this, we become the all knowing. And this is why the word atonement is there because atonement is at one meant, not the jewel. Is that the same as in enlightenment? Yeah, spiritual atonement is enlightenment. And all you're trying to do is enlighten the mind, which is bring light to the mind and the only way that plasma is created is from torus filled energy and when these energies are so close in proximity and balanced light emits this is what happens within the clouds for lightning and it's just what happens within the whole of creation and is that like a specific point like the with the because obviously people talk about reaching enlightenment uh -huh. like, you know, how do you know when you've reached enlightenment or is it, you know, it's unmistakable not it's having sense. got there myself yet, <laughs> yet, it's un obviously. It's, un it's unmistakable. There, there's no, there's nothingness. It's a, it's a, it's a peaceful place, but enlightenment to me, I would say is something totally separate than having your full activated system via the Kundalini energy. I think when people raise their awareness and find enlightenment, the natural resonance of your body vibrates at a state of Kundalini awakening. But if one has the Kundalini awakening, they literally see a complete different render and they're merged with an energetic field. So their perception has a, has a non-physical aspect to it. And this usually gives people some, well, sometimes gives people spontaneous ego death. So they realize the true mechanics of our multiverse. And how everything's come from just the mind's eye. And the halls of Amenti, such, such a place, is the halls, which is H A double L, which is the vibration of all. And then Amenti is a ment, which is a mind, and then the eye. So the halls of Amenti is the vibration of all the alpha mind's eye. And um, I, I need not say more. I think Brother Charlie should interact here. Mm -hmm. See if he has anything to say that may help people decode. The wordage uh again josh just so beautifully done and remember everyone um you know the these key words are are everywhere and they're in all of the the major words that that we use and exist and you know there, there's no more um word or letters in order that are more powerful and important than di die so <clears throat> again it's no mistake that that this representation modern representation of the sacred feminine would be lady die because it's di she she is uh, attempting within the royal family to to bring this this eternal balance the perfect balance of um, <clears throat> the father mother the yin and the yang um, to create completion and of course, it takes two to tango. And in that evil world, um, there was no room for her. So, um, but it is it is DI. So now you were saying, Alois, like with Josh. So then, as Josh beautifully explains uh, explained um, these various words. And again, 
you know, you need to see the double sine wave and then we need to be the double, the double sine wave. So the double sine wave is, is of course the S. That's a sine wave. And if there are two sine waves, then you create the scalar wave, which is magnetism, which rises. And so that's the little diagram that I created for, for everyone here. And then this teaches everything for you because this is you. This is you. This is you in a microcosm. And then this is the universe in a macrocosm. What you're looking at here is the plane of inertia. And the plane of inertia is planet Earth. -a. We are the flat level plane in the middle. We are the one to the eight. And that's how you get nine. And this is the divine nine creation of God. And this is both you at a micro, and this is again, the universe on a macro level. So you see the eight. So again, just to explain this out, that's what Josh is saying. There are two S's. And so now think about this. Remember with God and God's creation, it's always perfect. And it's always uniting every single aspect of God's creation. So, so in this, if, if it's the double sine wave, then they need to be opposite, opposite, therefore complete one another and to bring balance, die, uh, electricity, die, and the completion. So notice that what you're also looking at with the two sine waves, you're looking at the Ida and the Pingala, aren't you? Aren't you? And <clears throat> so where would, where would God be? Or where would the single I, which is a single I, <laughs> by the way, and I is the ninth letter of, of the alphabet. So where would the single I be on this? It would be right here. So what you're looking at is the one sine wave is the, is the feminine magnetic energy of Mary, the mother, Kundalini rising. And that would be the Ida and she rises up and to the left. And then she is staring in with, with perfect uh, awareness and passion to the middle center eye. And then the other S would be the child rising up, which is Jesus Christ. So this is Jesus Christ on his journey to become the Christed one or what I call Christ Jesus. So it, when you refer to Jesus Christ, it would be impolite to refer to Jesus Christ as Jesus Christ, the proper uh, terminology would be Christ Jesus, because Christ is a term. It is an anointing. So he has earned this, this sacred risen state. And so we would call him the Christed one or Christ Jesus. And so he would rise up into the right pineal gland, pituitary gland, Ida and the Pengala, and they look in on the center eye. And the center eye is the center of all creation. And that is the single eye. And the single eye in our alphabet is the ninth letter. <laughs> and that is divine. And of course, again, what are you looking at? The double sine wave makes the eight. See how perfect this is? Because what is magnetism? The only thing that can rise is magnetism. And magnetism creates a scalar wave. That's what you're looking at is the double Ouroboros is, a, is the number eight, and that is a scalar wave, which is eternally rising and falling and then rising and falling. It is, it is a completed field, and that is the eight. Then planet Earth in the middle, Middle Earth, Professor Tolkien knew all of this stuff. He was a genius beyond description. He and Lewis knew all of these things, and he encoded all of it in, in his writings. And Middle Earth is is us, that's us. We are the, the magne magnetically levitating plane of inertia. We are planet Earth in the middle. We are the one and one and eight is the 18. What is 18? Is either chi or ki, uh, C-H-I or Q-I, which is always known as the energy of life. And that is the magnetic electrical ether. And that, of course, is what we are. And that is why there has to be a firmament mind because it exists within God's eternally switched on from mind. And that's why I say to people, struggle with flat earth, if you are a little bit better, if you only have your own physiology a little bit, of course, of course, the earth is level, stationed at the center of all things. It's obvious because 
once you know what the sphenoid bone is, where it's located, how it's shaped, then you go, oh, here are the temples, <laughs> and here's the crown, and then inside is a circular flat plane called the sphenoid bone, and it's the only bone in your head that connects to every other bone in your, in your head. It's the plane of inertia, microcosm to your macrocosm. It's beautiful. This is the thing. And when, when modern science and the, the devilish cabal, they came along, and what did they do? They said, nope, nope, there was nothing. And then suddenly there was everything with a big bang because of course it has to be a bang because they're all about violence and so there was nothing and then there was a violent act and now there's everything and it's like the human eyeball uh, he, what did uh, what did darwin himself say he, he said the the plausibility of the theory that has been attributed to my name because really he didn't do it but has been attributed to my name he said really falls apart when you observe um just two things the human eyeball or a single strand of dna and he and he, <laughs> he says that really it would be, it'd be impossible to explain any of these things with a a creator, a benign, benevolent, beautiful creator. So you had Nikola Tesla 100 years ago begging mankind to go to the right, and instead we became humanity, the, the cloak of invisibility, humanity going to the to the devilish left and that's where we've been for 100 years and and you know living in a reality where where you know they've been putting the remains of our children in our food for the last 20 years and we literally have been force fed and become cannibals for the last 20 years so so tesla if we'd have gone tesla to the right 100 years ago believe me none of this would would have been happening but the good news is, of course, is that is that Elon Musk, <laughs> Elon Musk is building the biggest Tesla plant in Texas in the entire world. And uh, and so it, it's it's all about Nikola Tesla moving forward. And it has to be. It absolutely has to be enough of this insanity. So beautiful, Josh. Uh, I love you so much. And um Boy, uh, if you want to talk about magic in words, just look at all of these words uh, at Christmas time, Christ Mass time, uh, Alois, that we're entering into. And you look at every single one chestnuts roasting on an open fire. If you can decode chestnuts roasting on an open fire, that's you. That's why you're here purpose that's your journey chestnuts roasting on an open fire tells you everything you need to know it's all encoded in these christ mass words because this is the resurrection of man so take, us, take us through that charlie well it, it would just be it'd be endless but josh josh uh, can can do this out the the back side of his head as well so chestnuts roasting on an open fire. chestnut <laughs> <laughs> and roasting on an open fire. So, so first off, what is it? What is a chest? A chest is where we store treasures. And of course, the Bible itself, uh, the, the book of Matthew teaches us, uh, chapter six above all, but all of the, the book of Matthew, the New Testament teaches us that the real treasures of the world are here in the Ark of the Covenant. This is the, this is the Ark of the Covenant right here, the third ventricle of your brain in between the two temples of Solomon's temple. And um, so a chest stores your treasures. These are your treasures right here. And the there's chest, a nut. Yeah. That's right. And then there is a, there is a nut. Which is the pineal. <laughs> at, 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 which, well, in, in you have the pineal up and to the right, and you have the pituitary down and to the left. That's the father and the mother. But the flowering, which would be the fruit, which is the nut. See, a nut is not, er, okay. everything falls apart when you attempt to literalize. Do not literalize. When you watch these great okay. movies, like Colleen and I watched again a couple of nights ago, uh, Kevin Costner's A Field of Dreams. Watch it, watch it, and just soar into the heavens. Stop, don't try to decode it literally. Okay. It's not, it's, it is an allegory. Every time you attempt to literalize these things, that's when it all falls apart for you. You have to remember everything is a metaphor. Everything is a simile because all things are an allegory. Okay, Jesus never spoke, but in parables, which are allegories, okay? So, 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 so the nut, yeah, and so a nut is just mm -hmm. fruition. 
So it's the fruition of the father pineal gland, mother pituitary gland. So the nut is Jesus Christ. So the nut is the child. It is the flower of life. It is the flowering of life. It is the nut. The reason it would be a nut is because we're at the fall of man. There's not a lot of flowers at, at Christmas time, except the poinsettia, um, which is a noche buena, by the way. And then uh, American general uh, usurped that term and turned it into general <laughs> poinsettia. Um, but so that's why it's a nut instead of a flower, because at the fall of man, that's what's falling off the trees are these are these nuts for the winter season. And so it is the seed of life that has to be germinated then rises up for three months. That's why it's three days within the incubator incubation. And then it's rising for three months until the flowering above ground, because that's mm -hmm. what springing back to life is. We're, we're now above the sphenoid bone and we're back into summer and then uh, into spring and then summer. Springing to life and the summer, which is the full flowering before we get to the fall of man and the winter of man. And so you see, these are your four seasons right here. So chestnut, mm -hmm. chest is the third ventricle of your brain. Nut is the flower fruition. And in the wintertime, that would be a nut. So chestnuts roasting. Mm -hmm. So that would be, where do you put your chestnuts to roast? On the hearth of a fireplace. <laughs> so that's why with the Christmas tree, you got a Christmas tree full of lights with a star on top. And it's always next to a fireplace because you have to have a fire going in the wintertime. And, and the fire is this distillation that, that is taking place right now. And this is the, the, um, the baptism of fire that we must go through to purify the spirit. Water will purify the body. John the Baptist will come and purify you with the truth of this physical realm. But one will come later. Um, to give you the gift of the baptism of fire. And that is the Christed one. When the Christed one rises, then we are worthy to receive this gift of the baptism, which is the cleansing of our spirit, which must be cleansed. That's why Jesus must rise. That's why Mary, ri magnetism rises, because if she didn't rise, there's no way for Jesus to get back home because he's electrical and he's a downward causation. He can't get back up without the mother, Ida. Pingala, Ida Pingala staring at the center eye, father, mother, child. It's just so, that's right. And, you know, and again, the medical system, what is their symbol for, for health in the medical system? It is the caduceus. And yet that's funny because, because that is the subtle body that the caduceus represents the subtle body of the Ida and the Pingala that, that aren't aren't visually there, but every single ancient cult culture, of course, know that they are there energetically, which is this raising the highway of, of Jacob's ladder within you in a, on a metaphysical level. So this is a chakra superhighway, the chakra superhighway that's not blocked by Atlas. And so that's the magic of, of all of this. So, you know, the medical system, they, are, they base it on the subtle body system of the caduceus, and then everything they do <laughs> is down into the left. Now, let's give you, a, give you an injection. That's what we cut it off and give you an injection. And it's just ridiculous, ridiculous. But they use the caduceus to put the truth in plain sight. So uh, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. So the roasting is this baptism of fire that must come when, when we have finally fallen to the bottom of this pit and we go, we've touched bottom and we say, no more, no more. I'm not doing this anymore. God, please give me salvation the salted one, the saliva um, uh, within us, Jesus Christ. And, um, and, and so I, I'm not doing this anymore. And so we have fallen as far as we can go. We hit bottom and, and God comes and says, yes, I've already given you the fire within you. And that is, that is the Christed one. And so you are ready to receive. When you're ready to receive this gift of, of, the, of the baptism of fire, then Jesus will become the baptism of fire within you, the Christed one. And then you will achieve the third eye. You will achieve the Ajna and the illumination that comes with the crown of man above. So it's also beautiful. So chestnuts roasting on an open fire, open because of course it is free and it's also symbolizing the end of this journey, which is where the top of the head opens up 
opens up, see this, and then what, what is dominating the night sky right now, especially for us in the Northern Hemisphere, what is dominating the night sky? The Big Dipper. And the Big Dipper, it just goes around and around, up and to the right and then down. And this is bringing the open skull, the wisdom of the Father to you in all moments. And that is the swastika. So the swastika and Adolf Hitler, oh, he's just so evil, the most evil man and the evil people in the history of the world. And <laughs> and it was Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil. Do you know what that means? <laughs> victory to God, victory to God, victory to God. Yeah, no, maybe we've been lied to. Maybe we've been lied to. And that the swastika is the most beautiful symbol because it's the completion of this journey, this, this, this um, Christing within you, the chestnut roasting on an open fire. So it, it's just incredible. And Christ mass. So, yeah, you know, and why are there pine cones? Why are there pine cones? Because that's the pineal gland. And so, you know, and why are there mushrooms drying on the tree, the Amanita muscaria? What is the representation of the Amanita muscaria? And what were the colors of the Amanita muscaria? Who were these shamans of the northern regions, the, the, the boreal forest, which is a ring around the center of the earth, the boreal forest, they dressed up in the colors of the Amanita muscaria mushroom. And, and that is red and white. And that is symbolizing this Christmas gift to open the mind because that's what the Amanita muscaria does. If you can't do it for yourself, yes, then it is a free pass for it to do this. And that's what it does. It opens the top of your skull and then the swastika begins to spin and you go, wow, wow, I can't believe I, everything is a lie. Wow, I just need to love and be loved. I'm, I'm connected to everything, all things. I, I just cannot believe this. That's where sent, uh, this is where the tradition of the, of the shamans as, as a Santa Claus. And of course, Santa Claus is coming from the sacred claustrum, which is within you, which is again, just right at the back crown. That's the true crown of your head. And right next to, to that, there's three things that are right here at the back crown of your head. So you've got the claustrum, which is Santa Claus, sacred claustrum, Santa Claus. And then right below the claustrum is this opening of a chimney or a tube that runs all the way down, all the way down from the back of your skull in a direct line to the third ventricle, the very center innermost spot of your head. That's the chimney. That's why Santa comes down a chimney oh, wow. because inside your head is what's called a for a man. And it's for a man. Wow. It's for a man because it's for a man. And that's where Santa Claus is. And he goes down a chimney right into the essence of you, which wow. is here. And by the way, what is built at the very top of the chimney, right next, right next. I'm not making any of this up. It's in every medical encyclopedia that you want to look into. What's built right into the chimney at the top of the chimney, right next to the claustrum, is the mercy seat of God. So the seed of God is at the top of this foramen, the chimney that leads into the center of you. And right next to it is freaking Santa Claus. This is amazing. We are amazing. There is no big bang. There's no random occurrence. And all of this is just, it's, it's just, uh, you know, cold, no caring, just fluke. And no, you are loved. You are magnificent. You are magnetism. You are special beyond belief, folks. And, and how, all of these words, Christmas. And how is the this astrological alignment then going to support humanity? Because obviously this is going to be available for more people as we ascend. So can you just like speak to that for people listening? Because obviously it is an exciting time because that the conjunction really will be increasing uh, the energy on the planet and enabling more people to have higher gnosis and awareness. Can you just talk to that for a little bit? And I'll just quickly say, and then let Josh, because mm. Josh knows it even better than I, um, but, but essentially the great alignment that's going on right now with all of the planetary, Josh will tell you what a planet really means. And that planet tells you that the earth is flat. Planet doesn't say that the earth is, is, is a ball. It's, it's flat. And Josh will explain that to you in a sec. But the, the great conjunction is alignment and the alignment is turning you on. So that's all that junk DNA. 
Isn't that funny how organized society calls it junk DNA and you just go, I'm not going to think about it because it's just junk and I've got enough junk in my house as is. No, it's you switched off. And this alignment above is going to align you within. And so that's why I was doing this. This is the strands of your DNA, which by the way, are the Ida and the Pangala, the yin and the yang, the mother and the father. And see what I'm doing? On, off, on, off. So off, on. Off, so the on. alignment so above, what's on? so the alignment above yep. is going to help us align below. But the other thing I understand is that by being in alignment, so doing this work, basically by healing, by doing the spiritual alchemy work as such, and by being in alignment with your soul purpose, it actually helps the process because it actually switches on the DNA as well because you're energetically in a higher vibrational state. That's right. Uh, let's just pass it to Josh. Josh can just run with all of this stuff. Yeah, so naturally we are inactive um, within the matrix. We have inactive DNA, inactive amino acid coding, and we can progress ion by activating our higher senses and perception by just utilizing the true food for our design, which would be fruit. And if we can eat fruit the closest we can to homegrown fruit from organic so then this will activate inactive dna it will clean out the negative thoughts and all the problems associated with the material world it allow us to become more receptive to all of this energy that's coming and if we want to uh, have a, a factual uh, or a scientific uh, view on it you can always look at the um the test done with magnets and when the uh, seed is aligned with the magnetic field on the correct side, mm -hmm. it will correct the structure of a DNA. It will correct the structure of the seed and make it perfect, make it taste great, make it grow without disease. Um, so this is what's happening within the earth right now. If we can be in alignment, which is just align the mind, and we can have this clarity we can pick up everything we need to do now to move forward with this journey. So it's very simple. It's not mm -hmm. a difficult thing to do. Everybody's going to experience some different cognitive function and some more spiritual awareness from this. But again, depending on how far you want to take it is, is, is down to you. Mm -hmm. um, so you can take this as far as you want. You can open up as much as you want. So there's nothing really more to say, but I did want to add a few synchronicities from what Charlie just said, and it won't take more than you know one or two minutes. Um, but I've written them down. So the treasure, the chest, the roast in the fire, open on and nut. The the chest and the the wording of the chest would be to see the vibration of the ether sine wave in the physical. So that's what's hiding behind the true chest, which is the ether sine wave in our physical, which is what we need. The treasure itself, the word treasure, if there's one treasure, it's a physical R, which is the full magnetic, which is what he just showed us with the 18, the hyperbolog with the inertial plane. So a physical full magnetic E and A, which is the left and right, the red shift, the blue shift, the energy within a torus. And then the word sure is the sine wave you are or the sine wave you rightfully establish. So a treasure is a physical full magnetic ENA or alpha and etherical sine wave that you are. That's the treasure. So you the are the treasure. Thing. Exactly. So the only treasure, what we're trying to seek is actually this Ourselves. ENA these two Torah or this two double Torahs from the Bible. And if you look at the word roasting, you'll see again, it's a full magnetic void of the alpha sine wave of the physical in G, which G represents seven or the S even sine wave, which is where we're existing right now. And then on is a void or vibration that has ended. So when this reality has become on, the true vibration has ended. And now we're in this creation. And then, um, a fire, fire is the matter and consciousness that rightfully establishes. So within the word, the chest nuts, sorry, we didn't do nut. Nut is ending your physical. So seeing the vibration of the ether sign wave in the physical that ends your physical, which is moving over to the spiritual side. And then you have roasting and on, on the fire, which I just explained. So within the words themselves, they're basically telling you that it's the 
ether sine wave that we need to do. The Big Bang, mm -hmm. they always show us the truth in plain sight, but it's hidden underneath their cryptic coding. So yeah. the truth is when you have a positive and you have a negative, when they get extremely close, which is this red shift, this blue shift, this masculine, this feminine, at the center point, they create light, life, which is plasma. And this is the Big Bang. The only Big Bang from the void, which is a black hole, which is at the center of any magnetic field, when right. these energies reciprocate, they bang. And this is the Big Bang. It's just to do with magnetics. The mercy seed is me for magnetic seed. So the mercy is for me to see the full magnetic and then seed is to see SWD, which is form. So I'm seeing the form of the full magnetic. This is the mercy seed. Um, don't forget that Christmas is also called Xmas. Mm. And then <laughs> Xmas, X is balance. It's the perfect balance between the masculine and the feminine. And at the center, this is the die state. But Xmas and Ma S is the mother's sine wave. So you balance with the mother's sine wave mm. at Xmas. Okay, and this is wonderful. what we need to do. Um, also, planet, he said that, uh, Charlie but said that I would be gone. Sorry. I was going to say, so like you said, that, that they literally, so instead of balancing, we eat everything under the sun and we completely go and then poison ourselves by eating and drinking far too much. So we literally go the opposite end of the spectrum, whereas we should be the juice fasting. To, uh, okay. Oh. <laughs> these people <laughs> gosh you want to do planet though because plant planet is amazing and it's important yeah the the word planet itself we the p represents light then you have the lane and t represents physical so our planet is a light lane in the physical or a lane of light and this comes from the positive and negative discharging plasma which is creating an inertial plane this is an energetic field. This energetic field on this plane allows life to be created. And this all from this energy. This is why we must start to perceive life as an energetic form as we raise our vibration because all is energy and energy cannot be destroyed. We're pure awareness in this spiritual journey. It's incredible. And I think um, <laughs> that was the last thing. I also, you know, the, the medical system, if we know mm -hmm. that die is balanced, true medical is me, die, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm calling for this balance, you know, and the ambulance is am um, balance and how we need to heal ourselves is by being in balance. And this is the key, but it's so vast. This balance is, is so vast to try and perceive it with just like an ordinary mind that it has to be perceived by energy because everything is energetic. And without that perception, you can get lost in thinking, what do I need to balance? Mm. Absolutely everything needs to be balanced mm. everything incubation was in cube at ion mm. and this is why cube is spelled c u b because you be a cube and it's very important to know that this cube that we be in has to be unboxed and an unboxed cube represents the cross and the cross represents c the r which is the full magnetic void or vibration of the double sine waves everything in our language always points to the ultimate truth which is source which is this double light this is what we need to do to progress to the next level in this journey of man um the the word as well i wrote down he uh, charlie was speaking of the parable if you look at the word parable para means for parami parati yeah and then able so he's speaking in parables because it's to become able para able parables so this is for abling or enabling us mm -hmm. and how we enable and what we need to enable is a ball because we have one ball and we need the other to create mm. this wow. fascinating wow it's just amazing isn't it absolutely yeah. incredible absolutely amazing and there's so much like it must be completely amazing for you guys to look at just looking at a word and it just you know has a completely different meaning to probably 90 percent of the population so but that's the key if you look at the word meaning in mathematics which is the true nature of existence because numbers don't lie what does meaning mean in maths what does mean what is mean? average yeah there you go it's just the average perception that's been given to man. It's not the truth. Mm.
Wow. This is why we see behind it. And the hieroglyphics of the English language is going to be one of the greatest books to be able to show the true creative force behind consciousness and words, true magic. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Really great, both of you. Wonderful. Um, I'm going to invite Brandy in because she has been very patiently sitting in our waiting room. Bless her. So I'm going to br invite Brandy into the show now. But yeah, thank you both. Incredible explanations by both of you. I learn something every day. <laughs> So hopefully Brandy's still there because bless her, she's been in the waiting room for quite a while. She's connecting. Yeah, she's connecting to audio. So she'll, so she's there and then she'll just need to connect to video. So Brandy, can you hear me? Brandy, you're a fine girl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, there are all these songs, all these songs are, are just about the alchemical process. It's all about, about God. It's all about alchemy. It's about rising to the father through the alchemical process. That song, which, you know, number one hit single, Brandy, you're a fine girl. Look at the lyrics to the song. The entire song is, is about alchemy. Hi, Brandy. Hi, how are you guys? Amazing, well done, you made it. <laughs> I feel starstruck right now. My goodness. Hi, everyone. Hi, Brandy. So lovely to have you here. <laughs> um, I did want to say, Eloise, thank you so much for doing what you do. I absolutely appreciate you and love you so much. Oh, thank you. And Charlie, I'm Canadian, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great, eh? That's great, eh? <laughs> Yeah. Eh? Let's take down Justin Trudeau. Let's get rid of Justin. Wow. Get rid of that. Yeah, there's crazy stuff going on up here. Um, I do love you and Colleen very much, but my mom is absolutely your guys' biggest fan. So I promised yeah. her I would say hi to you guys and that she <laughs> loves you. Do you mind just giving her a little wave for me, please, Charlie? Oh, perfect. You did. <laughs> we love you, mom. <laughs> hi, mom. <laughs> And Josh, oh my gosh, your voice is just so calming and soothing <laughs> for me. And your knowledge is so inspiring. Whoa. I just appreciate you and your videos very much as well. Oh, thank you very much. I love and like to. <laughs> Whew, I'm shaking. Um, I will go into my question. Um, so throughout my time watching, I've heard that Colleen drinks um, a lot of orange juice throughout the day. And Josh has spoke about making tomato soup like from scratch, homemade. Mm -hmm. um, but oranges and tomatoes are acidic. Yet what you're teaching is that we want to be alkaline. So I'm finding this a bit confusing. And I've heard Josh express that using a silver spoon to stir with will realign the charge. Mm -hmm. So what does that specifically mean? Does it mean that the spoon changes the acidic to alkaline? And also, I've also read that if you put silver spoon into something acidic, it can ruin the spoon and damage it and maybe even give the food um, like a metallic kind of taste. Mm -hmm. Can you please help me with my inner sanding? Absolutely. So first of all, uh, orange juice will say that because something has a uh, testing on the litmus paper as acidity, it doesn't mean when it's ingested in the body, it causes acidity. What the true acidic nature of food and acidity is with our body is that anything that our body finds difficult to convert into the simplest source of food, which would be the glucose, causes the body acidity in that conversion process. So why we need to eat from the mother is because everything that we're given from the ground has this easy fermentation process. Now, we have live bacteria in our stomach or in our intestines, and these bacteria eat uh, the fermented food or whatever we decide to put in it, and it defecates. And what we want this bacteria to be doing is to be basically pooing out fertilizer, and this fertilizer allows our body to uptake the minerals that are inside of the food. Um, if you can imagine a piece of fruit, which is the highest form, it contains a seed, it continues life. And you put, for example, just a carrot on the side or a potato on the side. 
cut this papaya open or this mango and you leave it, how quickly do you see this start to ferment? The top layer, how quickly does it start to turn sweet and then start to go? And this is what you need for your body. This is the true source. The things that the body can absorb and make itself are alkalizing. The things that cause the body acidity and stress are the things that it cannot convert or finds trouble converting, such as meat, dairy, I mean, uh, root vegetables, but I don't want to shock everybody there. Root vegetables and vegetables, they're secondary to the fruit because, like I said, a carrot and a piece of fruit, the carrot's not going to ferment very easily compared to this piece of fruit. So if you can just start to gauge your perception and see that everything that goes into our stomach needs to be fermented and what will easily be fermented will cause me the least acidity. Now, the silver spoon realigning the charge is, for example, if we're utilizing um, our, our fruit, but we want to blend it as such, at the bottom of a blender, there's usually stainless steel blades. Now, this stainless steel is a magnetized or a magnetic metal. So this has a positive charge. If we blend our food and then our food's been in contact with the charge of this um, magnetic metal, what we want to do is have a negatively charged food because this is why Mother Earth is called Earth because she allows the charge because we all as electrical beings need to be earth or grounded to have a charging process. So what I use is a silver spoon to just circulate, to, well, create like a spiral within the food and even drop it in my smoothies after I've stirred it to be able to create this negative charge. Because when our body has the negative charge due to our bodies being positively charged, this creates the balance, this creates the dye, this creates the light. And was there a further question that I missed? No, but if I may, can it just be a silver plated spoon or does it have to be like full silver? Um, again, if the silver plated spoon is on something like nickel, which again is not magnetic, um, it would be okay, you know, but most um, silver spoons are pre 1950s as such. And on eBay, you can usually pick a, a decent spoon up for around about $10. So it's just worth investing in and then just utilizing that in the food. It's just a new dimension of thought to be brought to everybody because, you know, even chopping the fruit with a, with a knife, you're putting this magnetic metal through the food. But then if we just go back to simplicity, we can see that the mono fruit is the simplest way to live. If we take ourselves away from the truth, we feel an aspect of pain on our physical aspect or labor. Now, if you just see that the fact that we decided to take this fruit, cut it open and have plates and dishes, now we've had to create things that separates us from God, which takes up our time, which we start to feel in our bodies. And then this whole world has expressed itself through this, this wanting of separation. So the closer we get to God or the source, the easier things become and the more balanced we are. So simplicity is always the key. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Brandy, if I can jump in for a sec, you know, close to us here in Mexico is, uh, is a town called Patsquaro. And Patsquaro is very famous for all of its uh, copper plates and, and utensils. And when you do a little research about this, what you find <laughs> is that everywhere with all of these ancient cultures, they were all coveting and using um, copper plates, copper utensils, cups, uh, all of this sort of thing. Because again, this, this is the great um, uh, negative charge that is required. Because once again, remember, you're a man or a woman, uh, we are the child of, of the dielectrical father and the magnetic mother. So therefore, we are electrical in nature. We are friction caused between the, the eternal um, mating between, between you know, this uh, sacred gift of life. And so we're friction and electrical positively charged. So like Josh teaches, and by the way, this is, you know, why in, in, you know, in our home, we made sure that we did it as well. And traditionally, that's why in, in a home, all the pipes are copper piping so that while, you're, while your potable water is sitting there, it is alkalizing itself 
um, in, in these tubes. And of course, now everything has been replaced. Oh, it's too expensive. It's just too expensive. And then they artificially drove the price of copper through the roof. So you can't afford it. So then it's PVC. It's just plastic and plastic is just oil. And while they've lied to us in terms of what oil really is, it is a lower vibratory reality. It is a, it, you're not ascending through oil and, and gas and, and these, these lower vibratory energies. So um, it, it, it's all about rising. And to be able to rise, we have to get rid of this, this um, uh, positive charge of Joseph and embrace the negative charge of Mary. And so, you know, when, when you listen to Josh teach, again, everything is about the purity. So, you know, why is it that we should really be just, just having the fruit instead of vegetables and why is it that we should just be like Colleen just has predominantly just oranges? I predominantly just have watermelon. Um, and why should we be monetizing our, uh, our uh, food? And in, in this case, our fruit as well. And the reason is, is because it's all about Mary. And see, this, the sacred feminine mother, Mary, is the pure virgin. What virgin, remember again, when we, when we think literally we get ourselves into trouble, remember Jesus never spoke but in parables. Purity, the virgin mother, is the pure mother. And that's what Josh is, is so beautiful about, about his teachings and about all of, of the work that Josh has done with his food because, food, because that's what he is teaching is purity purity of the food, which will lead to purity of the mind, which is the unison of two realms, which is the connection to the father and the ascension to this, this 5D, this crystalline uh, form, which by the way, people are asking on, on, the, on the show notes and stuff uh, like crazy about, you know, Charlie, what do you think about, should we, you know, are crystals good to have? Yes, of course, because when, when, you, when you use your pineal gland, you turn your pineal gland literally. Now, this, this is literal truth. When you use your pineal gland, you turn it from desert. Land. This is true. When you don't use your pineal gland, the, the substance inside your pineal gland basically collapses and it doesn't really have much of a shape. And inside of it are these little particles that are essentially like grains of sand. And so that this is where all the allegories in the Bible and the ancient scriptures are all about you know, Moses for, for 40 years and Jesus for 40 days and 40 nights across the desert. This is to activate the pineal gland. And, and when we don't use it, it's a vast desert wasteland. When we activate the pineal gland, it becomes a crystalline structure in the shape of a diamond. Diamond. Die. The, the perfect balance of the a father mondo mundo of this of this world of both worlds above and below so that's that's literally what happens so you know crystals absolutely because again this is the you know the manifestation uh in the microcosm to the macrocosm or vice versa and that is everything is just that pineal gland needs to turn to a crystalline diamond inside of your head so yeah, great stuff, Josh. Great stuff. And again, this, the copper, which is what we have and, and we use, copper piping, copper utensils, because this is that, that purity of the Mother Mary um, uh, negatively charging the positive charge within us, creating dielectricity. Yes. Pardon? Well, I think we've lost him. It's pure beautiful. And even the word copper, you'll see co, which is join, p, which is light, and then per, which is each. One per child, one each child. So each light can be joined with this copper charge. And this is how we can do it. It's, it's very, when you start to see it holistically, you'll find that it's everywhere, everything. And this perception is going to carry us forward. Thanks so much, everyone. Oh, mm. Such a pleasure to meet you. you have a Was wonderful that helpful, day. helpful, Brandy? Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so in really kind of simplistic form, then, what you're saying is, is, if you look at it from an energy perspective, from a vibrational perspective, obviously fruit ferments and uh -huh. is high vibrational and keeps us in a higher vibrational state because it's less dense so meat is obviously very dense yeah 
it's that energy helps. that we're losing through the digestion process because it's the, the prana is directly stored in our gut. So that prana is going down, not up. Yeah, and you're utilizing the energy that you could be having that's helping rise your awareness. It's just keeping you suppressed through the through the physical aspects, which is why we, which is why we're here in this experience. Don't think that anything outside of us is a mistake. It's all part of this uh, this creation of consciousness. We're exactly seeing what we're supposed to see. We're part of exactly everything we're supposed to be a part of. All we need to do is to be able to observe it. And then we can do the best of each and every situation and progress and rise in our awareness. And when we raise it to a certain level, this is why the level is so important because it's the two L's that become even. And this is the mission, which is my double S ions in every single man. No one has a true purpose here apart from to find this space. Everybody has a, a different type of way of getting there, which is called expression. And mm. this is why Bruce Lee used to say, you know, to express oneself honestly is the hardest way to be um, because most people are blocked or are trying to please other entities and they're not expressing themselves because they can be trapped by job, by work, by anything. And each and every one of us, if we were just expressing, the place that we exist now would be an absolute wonderful space. And uh, it's on its way there. It's on its way there. So mm. it's not long. It's not mm. long. I'm trying to log in through my uh, email now because my battery is very low. Mm. okay well if we lose you we know where you've gone so obviously lots of religions um you know they they do prolonged fasting to get closer to god so i presume yeah. that is exactly the reason why they would do that um As, again like most religions within the food system they have a lot of grains and they have a lot of things like this even you know um uh, the highest form of religions i find that they still you know say that certain foods grains rices and these types of things are a good staple part of the diet but it's not fruit is the only food for mankind and fruit ferments fruit gives you the true charge it keeps you free from all disease and again it tastes very sweet and this is what we seek in flavors within our mouth but um so things that are hard difficult to ferment basically yeah. that's the way to look at it is whatever you're putting in your mouth is how easy will that will my stomach be able to break that down into fermentation exactly so beans are very difficult then aren't they things like things like because yeah. they, they've got almost like a shell around them or yeah legumes so legumes, so i'd yeah. say you know legumes are not a food they're basically a a nitrogen balancer for the soil so you'll see that they grow in between our fruit and this creates a wonderful soil and um this is all it was about it was, it was the earth working in synchronization with itself um, and fruits uh, are the key component to our longevity here yeah. and, and fasting fasting is key to a lot of things and um especially if one's not very well um, to fast and to abstain Absolutely. It enables the body to clean itself effectively because it's not digesting. Yeah, at a cellular level, which allows the energy to be rebuilt, especially people with chronic fatigue and things like this, people that have very low energy. It's important that we can raise this energy and we, we can't raise it by constantly digestion. We have mm. to have peace and balance there. Mm. Okay, fantastic. And what would your advice be to someone who's never fasted before, who wants to get kind of get into it? How do you ease yourself into it? It's depending on the way that you eat, I would say, you know, initially, if you're eating a Western diet, it's good to just try whole foods for a while um, or even smoothies. You know, um, you can cook the food initially, but it would be wonderful to move away from cooking the food. Uh, I find most people fail because they think things are difficult. Everybody likes a milkshake. There's no need to hurt cows to have them raped, taken away from their mum. We can just use the fruit. Simple, easy, blend up your food, fruit drink it, move on. If you like to create dishes, then start to spend time with the food and start to learn the culinary practice of uh, raw food chefing because it's very simple when you can start to connect these foods. Um, so yeah, transition through the, through the cooked food to the raw food, to the smoothies, to the juice. And then once you've done the juice, you could do a water fast and this allow the body to slowly clean itself as you're progressing. So you don't have a, a too heavily, uh, detox and such 
And the uh, cookbook's out soon, or I should say the uh, the non-cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> it does have a lot of cook recipes in there for people because transitioning is key and we don't want to fear them, especially if people still want to have a cooked treat as such now and again. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's finished. But I decided to add some more information on there so people can understand about water fasting, the truth about salt, the truth about dairy, the truth about meat and why we don't have these things in our diet. Also some key components to do with um, the transition from all of these foods, just as we spoke, but a bit more in depth. So I just wanted to make the book a bit more um, helpful in adapting to the space. So uh, it's, it's next few days, next few days. Oh, fantastic. So, but yeah, in the, in the next week or so, it should be available for everybody. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. I look forward to that. I've been waiting because it's going to be so useful to have like something that I can have physically in my kitchen that I can refer to and actually, you know, utilize. So, yeah, that's very exciting. <laughs> Lots of people are very excited about that. Ah, Louise. Okay. Louise is just coming on. So, I've got. Um, one lady from my Dharma Life Academy who's joining us this evening. She is incredible. You're going to love the lovely Louise Small. I have to say, I'm very proud of everybody in the Dharma Life Academy just because they have come so far from when they started. And Louise is incredible. I'll get her to share a little bit about who she is and what she does in the world. Um, but I'm so proud of this woman's journey. She is... Oh, she's not going to... <laughs> she's she's uh keeping us in suspense <laughs> did you see those eyes yeah she's those, gorgeous those, those are those are lovely lovely eyes <laughs> so i think josh how are you, people are asking how they'll be able to get the book is it um at the moment at the moment i just got uh, on, on our patreon it's just a tier that allows people to get the book but i will be looking into the best way to bring it out i i think um it's yet to come so i will definitely have it as it's dropped uh, uh, an ability to obviously have the book but for now it's going to be on a pdf format and i would like it to get a paperback so i might have to utilize something such as the amazon bookstore where they just print it as people order it so it's possible yeah, if anyone to... knows how to do that or has any connections in printing who might be able to help Josh out getting the book published yeah, we'll, or... we'll be able to help you with that Josh we'll yeah yeah no oh, not a problem thank you. thank you well Charlie will be able to help me and um thank you very much with that yeah excellent excellent so fingers crossed Louise are you there du, du, du. hello Eloise, you couldn't email me that um, link, could you? So I can't, I can't find it. I've been through thousands of emails again. Uh, which which link for the for, this, for the chat? For I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find it now, but I can't. It's in WhatsApp, and, but I can email it. Oh, she's having hello. microphone issues. Okay. Hello, the microphone not working. Oh no! How annoying. What about your camera? Can we see you? And then you could put your you could put your um you could put the mess, the question in the chat. We have got the beautiful picture of you, but I'm hoping, there she is! Can you hear me? Yes! Yes, yeah. oh, yeah. yes. yes. Hello. hello! Hello, hello. Good day, nice to see you all. <laughs> Were your ears burning? I was just singing your praises. I, I did hear you, but I had to turn it off because I was a little bit embarrassed. I was... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just saying how proud of like proud of you I am for the journey that you've been on. You're just incredible, and um, yeah. I'm very pleased that our paths crossed. And I'll get all emotional now. <laughs> oh, bless you. Yeah, no, it's it's lovely to be here with everybody, and just the family seems to be growing all the time. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, my question. I found it a bit difficult to formulate it, really, but. Um, I don't know, I've got quite an interest in mental health. Um, I seem to, I know quite a lot of people with mental health issues. Um, so things like depression, anxiety, OCD, uh, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. Um, a lot of them are on medication um, and pharmaceutical, exactly. Pharmaceuticals are not really something that sit well with me, but just looking at, you know, the bigger picture of how these things seem to be dealt with um you know by these big organizations and industries 
I mean, I have so many questions, but you know, what 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 would be a better solution? What's you you know, I'd like to hear what you guys think about you know, your insight on why these things happen, why these things, you know, depression, anxiety just seems to be pandemic. Um, you, you know, Louise, well. Louise, because you're not being you. And <laughs> I, I just cannot, I cannot stress this enough. What, what, what is going on with everyone in the world is that you're out of your element. You're out of your mind. Right. You're, you, you've blown a circuit. Uh, you know, the screw is loose. All of these things simply relate to, to living in the left brain instead of being where you need to be in the right brain. Remember, everything that is that that we exist from is from creation. Now, what is the singular definition of the right hemisphere of the brain? It's the creative brain. <laughs> the, the left brain doesn't create anything. So if you want God and if you want the purity of the mother, they're here in the right hemisphere of the brain. And it's as simple as that. So, so therefore, um, you know, people who have migraines and um, who are just constantly, um, you know, one disease to the next, sickness, 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 all of it is so simple. It's all so simple. They make it complicated because they'll never let you in on the simple truth. The simple truth is, um, all you require is balance and you are in control of your own balance. And that is the food that you eat, the breath that you take and the thoughts that you do or you do not take. And so therefore meditation plays such a key role. And then everybody says, yeah, I know Charlie, and you know, you're really good at meditation and stuff, but every time I try to meditate, I, I just, I can't still my mind. Remember what I said first, the foods you eat and the breaths you take. If you, and those don't require manuals and, and they really don't cost anything. It's just, it's free, abundant uh, wisdom and it's pure, plain common sense. So when you begin to give your body what it asks for, which is a simple, plain, simple sugar, a natural sugar, um, which is glucose from eating raw food and in particular raw fruits, then you are stilling the mind and the body. When you are doing the Buddha breathing, the Buddha breaths, when you are having diaphragmatic, diaphragmatic breathing, when you're breathing from your diaphragm. So again, let's go through this. Everybody looks at that picture of the Buddha and everybody, you know, he's a big fat guy. Buddha wasn't fat at all. The Buddha had a big belly because that's how you breathe. And, and, you know, I, I cannot stress this enough. If you're having diaphragmatic breathing, you can't be depressed. <laughs> like, like, I'm not kidding. It's that simple. And then the biggest problem that we have are the thoughts that we take because thought in the physical form is coming from your left brain. The right brain doesn't think. It's a gateway. It's a gateway because that's what the pineal gland is, a portal. So in the right hemisphere, you don't think. It's a gateway to God. And so you're kind of daydreaming. That's, that's how artists are, right? That's when they create their best work. So many great artists, they say, you know, I don't even know how I wrote this song. 15 minutes and the entire song was done. And I felt embarrassed putting my, down, my, my name down as the author because it just sort of flowed right through me. That's mm -hmm. the process that occurs when you're in your right brain. And that is creation. Creation is life. God is the God of the living, not of the dead. The left brain is death. If you partake life through your left brain, you will surely know death. Remember, people say, I say this all the time, that we are eternal beings. And they go, Charlie, you're crazy because just look around you. Everywhere you look around you, people are growing old and dying. Yes, because everywhere you look around you, you have people believing that you're supposed to grow old and die because they all live here in the left hemisphere of the brain. Cross the river, pay the ferryman the dime. The dime is the tithing. The dime is the 10% left brain. That's why your left brain is the dime brain because it's 10% of the brain's capacity. The 90%, nine plus zero is nine. That's divine. You have to have divinity in your life. Where is divinity in you? The right 
<laughs> the right hemisphere of the brain. That's the 90%, nine, nine, nine. It's all about the nine. Donald Trump is the 45th president of the United States. It's not an accident. It's not an accident. JFK was the 35th president of the United States, which is eight. It's not an accident. Eight plus nine is 17. The movement is the Q movement is 17. And you know, one plus seven is eight, which is the eternal scalar magnetic wave of eternal life. So all of the problems that we have in our life is because you're not you. You are not your left brain. Your left brain is mm -hmm. death. If you live there, you will surely die there. That's what Jesus teaches in the, in the New Testament. There's nothing else that Jesus teaches in the New Testament. He's only teaching you about crossing the river. That's everything. You've got to get off the citizenship and walk upon the maritime admiralty waters back to the land. And then where did Jesus go when he got off the ship? The citizenship. He got off, walked on the water. Where did he go? He went to the, to the Mount of the Olives. Okay. The olive just happens to be like where, where remember the crucifixion, crucifixion, where we go from the body, the temple of the body to the temple of the mind is that hypoglossal nerve which is that opening that goes into your brain stem, right? Okay, the hypoglossal on either side, this is real, this really, really exists. On either side of the hypoglossal, which is where the, the, the pneumogastric nerve or the vagus nerve connects back into the brain stem, um, where it enters at that hypoglossal opening, on one side is a pyramid, not making this up, it's true. Look in any medical encyclopedia or dictionary and it's there. On one side is a pyramid, and on the right side is an olive. No shit. A pyramid and an olive. And that's <laughs> the entering back into the brainstem. That takes you to the fourth ventricle, which takes you to the third ventricle, which is heaven upon earth. So all you have to do is cast thy net to the right. How do you cast your net to the right? The food that you eat and the breath that you take. Get off of, stop watching TV. Get rid of all of your medications. Don't eat a single processed food. Remember, a processed food means by sheer definition that there's a natural alternative. Why are we eating processed foods when there is a naturally occurring alternative? Well, because it's cheaper, it's faster, it's more convenient. Because they make it that way. Because they are the Canaanites. They Cain murdered Abel and ate Abel. And that's what they're doing to our children. Nothing has ever changed. The Bible laid it all out for us. Nothing has ever changed. The demons that are in charge right now are Canaanites. And they are killing us because we are the children of Abel. And to be able is to do. And to do is to create. And the creator is the right hemisphere of the brain, which is creation. So... Everything is about you becoming you, Louise, and that is you being in that beautiful, you know, dreamy state of the artist in the right hemisphere of the brain. And that, so the biggest thing is stop worrying about money. When you just become you and be whatever you need yourself to be in that right hemisphere of the brain where you're putting others first, living that life of service to God and God's creation. If somebody needs my help, I will be there in a second because that's just, just who I am. And that giving is how you come to know receiving and the receiving is abundant. So, but to be able to receive, you have to give. So we have to change this, this lifestyle of greed and take, take, take. And what about me? And it can't happen fast enough for me. And it's like, when is Donald Trump going to actually do something? Mm. You're forgetting about the kids. You're forgetting all about the, I, you know, I don't even know if that's true. I, I don't even think that that, what about me? What about me? You're not going to receive. You're not going to receive. You're going to delay the process till the very, very, very end when you are me, 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 me. It's about, it's about helping others. So like, like I said, in that, that incredible Star Trek episode, Gene Roddenberry back in the 60s that, you know, the very famous episode and, and Captain Kirk said that even more so than I love you, those three words changed our reality and led us to where we are today. And that was, let me help. Let me help. When you help others, then you shall know receiving and the gifts of, of receiving are from God and they are 
pure, abundant, and they are pure life, and you'll live forever. Um, we see it, don't we, Louise, in the Dharma Life Academy. You know, people come in and they have been living purely in the, the left brain and they haven't been, you know, connecting to their higher self and they haven't been living in alignment with their soul purpose and they haven't been of service to others. And, you know, we see it really quickly. People shift from being disconnected and depressed and, you know, unhappy with their life into a different frame of mind, into a different mindset, into a different way of being, you know, it's rather than it's about gratitude for where they're at and being of service to others rather than about what is wrong with me and why is my life so shit. Um, and when we start healing and we start working on transcending the ego, all the work we've been doing is all about transcending the ego. And, you know, I love watching everybody blossom and grow and just then become peak and, uh, beacons of light themselves you know that's what I love in our community I've been watching you do some incredible work um, you should share with Charlie about your newspaper article writing it's amazing I don't really know how much to say um, yeah I've started writing for like a truth newspaper uh, which kind of came out of nowhere, but I guess we know it didn't really come out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I've I've got a hot lead today, actually. I've uh, been approached by a police officer uh, who wants to get some truth out. So looking forward to writing that one. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> it's really amazing, though. It's brilliant what you're doing. It's fantastic. And uh, yeah, I've watched you really come alive and, you know, do something that you're incredibly good at and passionate about, which is what life's about. Thank you. I think I always wanted to write, but I was I never really knew what to write about. So, yeah, I think now I've got to the point where I'm starting to know. Yeah. So thank you. And Josh, anything to add about Louise's question? Would you want to just repeat it for Josh, Lou? Yeah, I mean, I'm just sort of really curious about this whole kind of, you know, seems to be like a bit of a mental health pandemic really going on. It, um, and the only sort of solution that's given in the mainstream is, um, you know, medicine, isn't it? Uh, we don't seem to be looking after these people very well. Um, but I think from what Charlie said, it just seems like it is just part of the veil that's been put over us for our whole lives. Yeah, um, you know, and the best cure for mental health is nature. It's, mm -hmm. it's the disconnection from all the material things. It's, it's, it's being put into these houses, it's being put into these boxes. And what people are doing is they're, their awareness is seeking and they're feeling the pain because there's something inside of them that knows that this, this isn't right. And without the, the action of those feelings, then they're going to continue to feel the pain of... Uh, either the mental state, the physical state, or the emotional. So if, if there's an ultimate cure, it would be a food forest. It would be outside nature and eating. Um, obviously, some, some issues, neurological issues, are due to vaccine damage and the accumulation of heavy metal toxicity. So we can free people's minds from such ailments as that, but it's the internal work that's going to free people from the, the pressures of anxiety and depression because again that's just past and uh, future um, living in the past is depression and living in the future is anxiety so if we can just find a, a space where we can help people see that the voices in the head are totally natural it's a part of this existence that you're not crazy you're not mad all we need to do is to beat them and as we beat them, we progress, they leave us. These demons are jinns, they've been spoken of since time. And uh, really as a part of our journey here is to tackle these. And the strongest warrior of all is the man who tackles himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that, thank you. <laughs> and you doing your work, Lou, you're a stand for them because they're seeing you, you know, shift, get happier and, and people start to notice and they go, well, what is it you're doing? You know, and I think mm -hmm. that's the thing that we need to sort of remember is we can't can't force people to shift and change but we can shine a light you know we can be the beacon of light that people want to understand why is it that person's so happy and actually you know they don't ha have depression and they don't have mental health issues or they've got rid of their mental health issues what is it that that person's done um and hopefully they can then be the light that other people step into so everything you're doing is amazing um and yeah thank you for thank you for coming on 
Thank you. Thank you for having me. Nice to see you all. <laughs> really lovely to see you. Thank you, Lou. Really lovely to have you with us and uh, keep doing what you're doing. We're very proud of you. Thank you very much. Hi, darling. Lots of love. Yeah, take care. Bye. Bye. It's in the word depression. If you have D, it's removal. And then you have the word press, which is P, which is light, and then R E, which is rightfully established, the double sine waves. And mm. this is the root cure to depression, is to bring forth this true energy field in every aspect of this existence. It's there in every word, the cure is there. And mm. then uh, in the word cure, you'll see you'll see the, the cure. <laughs> And Charlie, I, I loved what you were you were also saying about um, you know when we're giving to others, we can't be depressed. You know, I think that's such a vital point that I'd like to kind of just elaborate on because you know the the giver is the great good, the giver is the great. You know, when we give, like you can't beat that feeling of giving. You just feel so fulfilled inside. You, you can't you can't become bankrupt um, because again, all of these terms start initially metaphorically or in the metaphysical realm and then play themselves out in the physical realm. So the only way that you can become bankrupt in the physical realm by this corrupt system is you buy, if you buy into it and you have, you have no treasures within yourself and then it'll play itself out in the physical realm and you'll find yourself without any wealth and you'll be bankrupt, but you are morally bankrupt. And, and again, Josh and I get it. We absolutely get it. We, we understand this. They attack us from birth. So the, the fact that, that you are suffering from moral bankruptcy is, is, makes perfect sense. The trick is this, that we are divinely created. So by, by doing nothing more than just shutting off, just shutting down their system, just by turning off their system, that's half the battle. And then if, if you examine their system, and did the opposite of what they've taught us to do, there's the other half of the system. So the first half of the system is to examine it and then shut it off. And then the second half is to turn it the upside down. And then you'll be 100% right. And you'll be righteous. Because I guarantee you, if you are someone that does nothing every day, except I'm just going to go out and help people, you will be rich beyond your wildest imaginations because it God. has followed suit. You will, mm -hmm. you will meet, you will meet God. What did Jesus do in, in the Bible? <laughs> you know, he's on this journey and all that he did was, mm -hmm. was freely help and heal everyone. So a couple of things I just want to quickly share with everyone about Josh and I, of all the people that are out there, of all the people that are out there, we don't ask you for anything. If, we, if you want to help us, that's wonderful, but you don't have to. We cannot charge you for our truth because it's not our truth. We are merely caregivers of, of this higher gnosis because we've done the work. That's the other aspect I want to share with you. There's nothing that Josh and I teach, nothing. And this is very important when you're thinking of what Josh teaches you about feet and how to do these very radical and maybe a little scary for you. This is how we both live. Michelle, Colleen, um, little one. Um, this is how, this is how, you know, the five of us live our lives. In other words, there's nothing that we teach that we don't do ourselves. And I think that's what sets us apart. Not, I'm not saying makes us better. I'm just saying sets us apart from virtually everybody else who, that's out there. We don't teach theories. We practice what we preach and so what we're teaching you is gnosis because we put it into operation so we are real doctors because because we put um th these practices into practice and then we become the masters through this practice and that's that's you know i didn't start doing this 20 years ago because i wasn't ready i've only just started doing this for a few years because it's only in these few years. And when I look back to when I first started on, with Freak Sense TV, I'm on, almost embarrassed at some of the things that, that we did in, in, in the beginning. So you're constantly learning, you're constantly growing. And this is another thing for all of you that I'm just, I'll just say without necessarily naming names. 
there are so many very big and famous people within the, the truth community. Let me, let me warn you, okay? Truth means that you're changing in every single moment because you can never know it all. You can never, ever get to the end. If you did, this would just be boring beyond description. You can't. There's always more to learn. There's always more to do. So a true seeker of the truth, a true seeker of God is always changing, is always learning, is always growing and expanding and ascending because there's always more to learn. Look at the biggest names in the truth community. They have been saying the same shit for 20, 30 years. That's impossible if you're a true, I'm sorry, but it is the truth. That's impossible. If you're actually a truther, then you're constantly changing and these people are not changing. Beware, beware of those that are peddling the same shit on the same street corner every single day. Jesus was never in two spots, but the same spot twice. He was constantly moving forward because that's how we're supposed to live our lives. Sorry for that little preaching there, no, but, but, it's very, but it's very, very important that people understand things. Yeah, it's a very good point. And um, I've got a video coming out I've just done today, which is coming out on Friday, which is how to discern misinformation because we do get caught in consciousness traps and there is a huge amount of misinformation out there and it's about you guys having that in a standing of you know who who is telling the, having the right gnosis that you need to listen to and how to develop that and how to discern that um because it is really really imperative um if it makes and... you feel good that's what you need to really feel you need to feel the people if they make you feel good and positive and they charge you up in a way then that's going to yeah. be the people to seek we need to focus on no negativity to unveil a lie is not to be filled with truth. Um, and this is the secret to true knowledge and true wisdom. And there's not a stone in my progression and Charlie's progression that we haven't unturned. And this is why we're here because we can talk about everything from, you know, the water, the, the magnetics, the earth, the physical nature, the etherical nature, existence, how to eat, how to live, how to, what was the best fuel to use, how to build a house, what's the best. All of these things here we have within us, but they're not the ultimate truth. And having these aspects of these dimensions across the whole physical plane to be able to deliver something in a simplicity way or, or the way that's most simply absorbed can almost sometimes seem that, it's just not going to be the truth. But as you progress in your journey, you always return back to the simplest form. And this is why things should always be taken in basics. B as I see. It's very key. So, you know, there's no cure. There's no, there's no, there's no pill. There's nothing, but really it's just fundamentally what you're putting in your mouth is creating your disease. What you put into your head is creating your mental state and how to free yourself is by going away from all that because you've separated yourself from source. You know, God itself is this magnetic field and we're here as consciousness, as pure awareness. If we're separate from that and we get put in these boxes, the cure is in the word. You need to be the void balanced. And how you do that is by going back to the source. And this is the earth, the true family, the true friends that vibrate around you, the stars, the sun, the moon, the trees. The trees take away your carbon and they give you fresh oxygen. But people don't really sit back and appreciate the nature of that, you know. And um, when we do this, we're free, we're cured. Beautiful, beautiful, wonderful. Thank you both. Always a pleasure, absolute pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, so we've got the 21st coming up. So everyone, please put that in your diary. That's going to be an epic evening, 7 p.m. UK to 7, 7 a.m. your time, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 12 hours of absolutely incredible entertainment and wisdom and gnosis and then josh your juice fast has started today is that right tomorrow it begins tomorrow. tomorrow yeah we've got a wonderful group of, of beings we have um, a wonderful family everybody's supporting each other guide each other communicating and uh, send them pictures of what they're doing and we have put some videos some information up if you are lost and not sure what to do um, and we'll be constantly posting what we are doing and and sharing wonderful inspiration so it'll keep you on point um, and that's just on our, our patreon group and we have uh, accustomed a telegram group where we're all interacting 
So basically, people, if they want to join that, they join your Patreon group and then they can join the Juice Fast within that. Yeah, and we've kept it very low. It's just simple three pound. But what we didn't want to do is overfill the Telegram group of people that weren't necessarily on no, the journey great. themselves. But we have a wonderful family. I mean, everybody there is really, really excited it's about popping. Them. I can see it. Every, it pops on my phone every every two minutes. Yeah, fantastic. And but, so, it's the juice fast for how long? And then. We're doing a 20 day juice fast um, and then followed on those three days of stillness, we'll be drinking distilled water um, and this will be a, a great purification. And uh, in that moment, we will become the most humble we've become. And uh, the energies that we can be received through those days, if we sit in stillness, you'll find a new dimension to life. Wow. Amazing. Sounds incredible. Thank you. And Charlie, anything you would like to talk about? Uh, just really quickly, remember the significance of the, this. Um, there are many different types of fast, but but the the oldest, uh, most ancient, and most valuable fast of all is that three day fast. And there's a profound reason. Three three is that number. Remember, Josh talked about the letter X. Josh X. Josh X is the perfect balance between the mother and the father, but it's not the end of the alphabet. And what are the two letters that come after the X? It tells you everything. It's you, it's you, it's you and it's your purpose. X marks the spot, but that's not the end. X, Y, Y do anything in life. And that is to get to the Z. And Y is the C, that is now, instead of empty facing, looking, uh, hoping for the father in the east, the, the C is now the Y, which is upright and strong and filled with the wisdom of God from above. And that is the Y. And that leads to Zion. Zion is that, is that ancient city. And it's the mark of Zoro. Why do you think in, in the Persian tradition, the greatest teacher of, of God's teachings of the founder, really, of Christianity is Zoroaster, Zoroaster, Zoro, the mark of Zoro. And that's why X is not the end, because it's about the child learning to be filled with the wisdom of the mother and the wow. father to become, that's right, to become the Z, father, child, mother. That's the Holy Trinity. That's what this is all about. And the three-day fast is a 72-hour fast. Seven is God intervention. Two is the divine feminine. And together, they create nine, which is divine. And if you wish to become divine, you have to do nine and so that's where the 72 hour fast comes in. And when you do this, when you fast for 72 hours, you get out of your own way. You just let, you let Santa Claus, God's best friend in the world, take over. He does everything for you inside. You don't even have to know what's going on or, or how or why. Just get out of your own way. Get out of your own way. Why do you have a headache? Because you're constantly bumping your head into a wall. You're constantly in your own way. Get out of your own way. If you get out of your own way, uh, the, the creation of God is so miraculous, it'll do everything for you. And you will have peace on earth. And that's peace of mind. Wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And if you would like to join us next week um, on the show, please email info at Aloise.life. I want to thank all of you for coming this evening. I just want to remind you that we're going to be doing an Unlock Your Abundance Challenge as well, end of January. We're going to be doing Abundance Bingo. We're going to be of service to others. We're going to be doing random acts of kindness, and we are going to be basically unlocking our abundance. So you're welcome to come and join that in the Dharma Life community as well. But we will see you next week. Next week's our seventh show. So we're going to be on the final alchemical level. Can you believe it? That's gone so quickly. It's fantastic. Time is fantastic. Good in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, everyone. We will see you next week on the Inner Standing Spirituality Show.